In this video, we'll learn about the select one and select multiple question types. Here I have my XLS form template opened up, which already contains the required tabs and column headers. It also has a few questions already created. Select one and select multiple questions require that we add content in two tabs, both the survey tab and the choices tab. First, we'll start with the survey tab, which will contain the question itself. For our example, let's ask the respondent a yes or no question. I want to know if they have a dog. I'm actually going to start by filling the label in this case. Do you have a dog? And for the name, I'll put has underscore dog. Now for the type, since this is a yes or no question, there are only two options that the respondent can select. Since we don't want the respondent to select more than one option here, we'll do a select one type. Unlike most types, the select one type comes in two parts, the type and a list name that actually references a list in the choices tab. For our example yes or no question, this is how we'll enter the type. First, the type, which is select underscore one space. Now we need to create what's called a list name. The list name is the name of a list of options that will be presented to the respondent to help them answer the question. The list name is specified by you and cannot contain any spaces or special characters other than a dash or an underscore. I'm going to create a list called YN to indicate yes or no. You might want to call this something different like yes or no, or Y or N, and you can do that too, as long as you avoid spaces and special characters. Now that we have the type, name, and label ready to go, we need to create a list of answer options over in the Choices tab. Now remember, in the Type column here, we've already indicated that this is a select one question, added a space, and then we've already created a list name, YN in my case. So I'll need to take this YN over to the Choices tab. In the Choices tab, each row indicates a different option that's being presented to the user. I need to reference the list name here. I used YN. And because this is a yes or no question, we have two options, yes or no. So I need to put YN in two rows. Now for the label, yes, no. And for this example, I'll make the name Y and N for yes or no. As a reminder, the name is the variable. This is what will actually display in the database. Now that we have a list of options in the choices tab that's being referenced after the select one in the survey tab, this question is ready to go. The great thing about select one question types is that you can reuse the list of options. For example, now that we've asked the respondent if they have a dog, we can also ask if they have a cat. Because we have YN here after the select one, this will refer directly to these choices that we've created, and we can reuse that as much as we'd like. Now that we're comfortable with the select one question type, let's briefly discuss the select multiple question type. It acts the same way as the select one question type as far as setting it up in the XLS form goes, except the user, the respondent, will have the ability to select multiple answers. This is good if you're asking them to choose their favorite foods, and they might have two, or maybe even three. So for this example, you would say select underscore multiple space. Again, we need to create a list name here. So I'm going to ask for the respondent's favorite foods. So I'll make a list called foods. The name, I'll say fave underscore food, and what are your favorite foods? All right, so let's take this 
list name that we created here called foods and make a list in the choices tab. I'm going to create five different favorite foods. Pizza, sandwich, soup, spaghetti, and tacos. And I'm going to give these each a name. I'm actually going to name these numbers. And these numbers will display in the database. So if the user selects sandwich and soup, that cell will contain two and three. So that's the select one and the select multiple. One thing to note about select multiple questions is that all the answers that the respondent selects do display in the same cell in the database, which sometimes makes analysis tricky. Where possible, try to avoid select multiple questions and restructure your questions to always be select one. In a future video, we'll learn how to do more with the select one and select multiple question types, like creating a cascading select that only displays options that make sense based on the previously selected answer. But for now, you know the basics of the select one and select multiple question types.